Mastering the pen tool can be quite a challenge for a beginning Photoshop student. So I've put together this little demonstration and I hope you would follow along with me to help you understand what to do before you even start working with the pen tool in the textbook. So grab your pen tool, open up the pen demo.psd, and let's work on the pen tool. The first thing we're going to work on are simply straight lines. Making sure that you are in the pen tool, simply click one time and click another time. And you can continue like that across your screen. Hit Control Z to undo a few of those. Beautiful. Now, you probably notice that the more I click, the more lines I get. So how do you get just one line, then stop, and then start again fresh in another spot without the lines connecting themselves together? The way to do that is to alternate between the pen tool and the white arrow. So you can either click back and forth in the tools panel or you can use a keyboard shortcut. The keyboard shortcut is the command key. So I'm going to hold down the command key and click one time. Notice that the path that I had made just a second ago is deselected. Now when I click, I'm making a fresh new path. So do that several times. Create a new path, hold down the command key, and then click off of it and pick up and start again. Okay, hold the command key down and let's finish that up. So the next part of this demonstration is how to create closed paths. I'm going to click in the corner of my square and then I'm just going to go all the way around down to the very last selection here. Notice that as I hover over the place that I want uh, that I want to close, the, play, the point that I started with at the be very beginning, a circle appears next to my pen icon. That circle indicates that I'm to close the path, so I'm going to go ahead and click that. And now we can see that I have a, a ranked rectangle there. But you'll notice that my, my square there isn't quite perfect, so I'm going to undo all the way back to the beginning. To get perfectly straight lines, click, excuse me, let's try that one more time. To get perfectly, li perfectly straight lines, click, and then hold down the shift key. Now here's the cool thing. Regardless of where I click, it will give me a beautiful angle. You see that? See how it's constraining what I'm doing? So I'm gonna hold down that shift key and I'm going, to, I'm going to continue around the edge of my square here. Again, hovering over the first point that I had originally created to get the circle and I will close my path again. That looks much better. Let's practice the same thing with the star shape. Hold down the command key to deselect the path you were working on before. Click, click, click. I'm just going to go around the outside of my little star, like so. And then finally, I'm going to close the shape. Great. I'm going to undo that. And this time, we're going to take a look at what happens inside the paths panel. You'll notice that I had a work path over here in my paths panel. This was from the things that we had done before. So we're going to delete this 
and then automatically when I start clicking again it will create a new work path for me. So let's outline the shape of the star one more time because practice is a good thing. I'm just clicking through. There. So over in, my, over in the paths panel, you'll notice that the work path shows your star now. Double click on the words work path. We're going to save this as star. This way, whatever you do, whenever you do another shape, your star path will remain pristine. You can always go back to it and work with it again. Just for fun, let's fill this in. Go to your layers panel, click for a new layer, go back to your paths panel, and notice that you've got several options down at the bottom right hand corner of your screen that are now available to you. You have stroke, so I'm going to add a stroke. Notice that the star now has a black outline. Let's undo that, Control Z, or Command Z if you're on a Mac. Then you can also fill the entire path. So click that. There's that shape. I'm going to Control Z to undo that one more time. So just know that when you have a saved path, you will have more options come available to you. You can have a solid color fill your path. You can have a stroke fill your path. And you can also turn that path into a selection by clicking the third button in. You can see the marching ants on the star now. I'm going to control Z to undo that. Many of you are probably like me. You're looking at the star going, oh, that just doesn't look perfect. Let me show you how to make it perfect. You want to grab your white selection tool, the direct selection tool, to toggle back and forth between your pen tool and that white selection tool, go ahead and hit your command or control key. Excuse me, command key. Select the point that you wish to move and you can either drag it with your mouse or you can simply use your arrow keys to tweak it. Now, one final thing that I would like to show you is that if you hold down the Alt or Option key and you hover over a point, you get that little angle, that angle pointer. If you click and drag, you get the ability to make a curve instead of a point. If you go back to your direct selection tool, the white arrow, you can then turn your curve and then if you also hold down your alt key as you do it, you can turn one side into a straight or a curve, into a straight line or a curve. So that's just an interesting thing about how to do that. Okay, I'm going to get my white arrow tool and click off of that because we need to go and show how to show you guys how to create curves. So scroll down to number three. If you can't see the guides, make sure that you show those at this time. You can go up to view show, guides, or you could also hit command or control semicolon. On the left hand side of the curve, 
click one time, excuse me, click one time and hold. One time and hold. And then drag up to the guide. We know that we want this curve to start off going up. So that's why you have to click and drag up because it tells it, it kind of gives it a hint about which direction you're going. You'll see how that works as we go to the next one. Go to the intersection of the middle guide and the curve, click and drag down to the bottom guide this time. And you notice how the path does a nice job of filling out the curve there. Go to the next point, this time drag up. Next point, drag down. Next point, drag up. Next point, drag down. And then our final point. Hit Control Z, excuse me, Control Alt Z to undo that. I'm going to start my path one more time. Click and drag up. Click and drag down. Click and drag up. Click and drag down, click and drag up, one more time down, and one more time up, Oops. one more time up. If you don't like the angle that a curve, is, curve has, hit your A key to get the direct selection tool, and then just simply tweak it a little bit moving the handles in shortens the curve moving the handles out lengthens the curves these handles are also known as directional handles they indicate and dictate the direction that the curve is going to go so what i would suggest is getting an opportunity to go through this again work on straight lines picking up and moving the cursor, work on closing your paths, and then also work on curves. I hope you enjoyed this demo. I'll see you for the next one.